Some 1,700 power industry professionals from over 60 countries have concluded the 10th annual Energy Summit, the largest utility event on the continent. The event unites senior power industry executives and decision makers representing the key stakeholders from the entire power utility ecosystem focusing on power infrastructure investment, renewable energy and new industry technologies. The event took place as the South African Energy Regulator granted ESCOM a nearly 25% increase in electricity tariff. Nepal's figures estimate that no more than 20% and in some countries as little as 25% of the population in Africa, excluding South Africa and Egypt, has direct access to electricity. This figure falls to 2% in rural areas. Demand is expected to grow by about 5% annually over the next 20 years. Experts say it is critical for Africa to build facilities to provide power to those lacking it, especially in the rural areas where the majority of Africans live. And now to discuss the outcome of the power of the African Power Utility Week, we are joined in our Cape Town studio by Claire Falkwin, the di Project Director of African Utility Week. Thanks so much for joining us here. Thanks for having me. Firstly, what are the highlights of this year's African Utility Week that you are able to share with us? I think for me probably one of the biggest highlights was the opening discussion that was held with the minister and some of the other panelists on our, um, in our opening session. Mm -hmm. the, the thing that struck me the most about that particular discussion was the openness of both the minister and the other panelists to answering questions and the fact that the, the audience were very interested and, and very engaged mm -hmm. and there was quite a lot of lively discussion about a number of issues um, around the single buyer um, model that, that South Africa is currently um, looking at changing, some of the issues around tariffs, some of the issues around new build. So, uh, you know, it was really, it was a very good and, and, and lively discussion. And I think that made a big difference to getting people excited about the rest of the event. Now, there was a special focus on uh, renewables this year. Can you tell us more about this and what was said? Well, as somebody said at the conference, renewables is the new sexy word for the season. <laughs> and, um, you know, everything green is, 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 is to be considered. And while I think that it's important for us to, to um, bear in mind that renewable energies definitely are a techn technology of the future and that they are going to have to play a role in our energy mix, I think it's also important not to discount them to the detriment of or, or, or to, to put them in, into a position where they are um, being upheld it, against other technologies. Mm -hmm. I think for me probably the most important thing to remember is that every single generation technology that we have at our disposal could and should be used. The more we hedge our bets, the more we spread our risk, the better um, we can ensure that we will have power when we need it. So be that renewable, be it um, coal, be it nuclear, I think that they all have a role to play and I think it's really important that we bear that in mind. Having said that, I think that the discussions around renewable energy this year were really <coughs> exciting. This is the first year that we've really had the opportunity to explore in such a, an in-depth way the role that renewable energies can play. And um, the, the, the number of people in the rooms when those discussions took place is a very good indication of the amount of interest that people have in renewable energy and the fact that this is definitely one of the technologies that people must keep an eye on for the future. Now, you know, Claire, just, just how feasible are renewables uh, uh, like wind and solar power on the continent, on a continent like Africa? Uh, there is a perception that using renewables is a very expensive uh, thing to do. And, and why, if that is the case, why would a country, why, why would a continent like Africa want to tap into this when we're, we're pretty much cash strapped already? Look, I, I don't disagree that, that in many ways renewable energies can be expensive, but I think that you need to take that into context. Yeah. Um, in addition to the entire life cycle cost of certain technologies versus renewable energies, renewable energies are clean um, pretty much from the moment that they put up. They might be a little bit more expensive in terms of the actual physical technology, mm -hmm. but they also don't have a fuel cost at all. They are operating on a, a negative fuel cost. That has to be a bonus. Yeah. In addition, we, we're all very well aware of the fact that we've had yet another increase in the tariffs for South Africa. And, um, you know, the more our, our sort of traditional electricity tariffs go up, 
the more things like wind and solar are going to become feasible. In addition, um, you know, I, I think so, one of the things that people need to bear in mind is that to give somebody uh, electricity in a rural area, there is enormous expense just in terms of laying down the transmission and distribution lines. Yeah. The last figures I heard were something like 5,000 US dollars per kilometer. In a situation like that, small localized renewables, be it hydro, be it wind, be it solar, make an enormous amount of sense for providing for the actual needs of those communities. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, when you bear that in mind, and also you bear in mind that the fact that renewable energies are fairly quick to put up in comparison to some of the more traditional generation technology, I think that renewables are incredibly feasible, and I think that it's, um, it would be foolish to discount them as, as a, 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 a source of, of Africa's um, energy future. Now, Claire, can you just tell us how difficult it is, though, to, to educate just the general public on the, on the use of uh, renewable energy? For those who, who don't quite un understand the concepts, do you find that it is difficult um, for people to grasp uh, the, the fact that renewables should now be used, or are people sort of taking it in? You know what, I think that people are actually really taking it in. One of the workshops that we hosted at African Utility Week was one on integrating renewable energy into a municipal environment. Mm. And what was so nice was the amount of people that attended that workshop. It, it, to be honest, we had standing room only. Mm. And these were people that were from municipalities who really wanted to learn how they could make provision now for the fact that they see a demand going forward. Um, and it's simple things like solar water heaters, um, solar traffic lights. Yeah. All of those things are fairly simple and easy to implement, but in terms of our base load and, and our peak load demand, they make a huge difference to the amount of energy that we are drawing from our grid. All right, Claire, it was a great pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for that. Unfortunately, we are out of time. I would have loved to carry on. Thank you for that. Thanks for having me.